My name is Paul Ogalo. I come from this organization called CREATA, Center for Regeneration and Empowerment of Africa through Africa. Um, most people ask why Africa through Africa, simply because we believe that um, Africa can regenerate itself. Africa has resources. Community, if we localize it, Kenya has its own resources. Communities have used their own resources. Uh, the only thing we need to do is to uh, trigger this, the discussion and the use of these resources for the good. But of course, recognizing the solidarity from, from the West, from the, rest of the, from the rest of the world. And that's what we are trying to do. So um, it also forms the basis of our engagement in the community. Uh, so um, because we start with the community resources. Our vision, we are a peace and development agency. Um, that is what we work for, for peace and for development, uh, considering very much the human dignity as a pillar of sustainable development. Um, we, we strive to enhance solidarity towards peace and development using sports as a catalyst for community transformation. So our niche is, is sports. We use sports as a vehicle of, let me use the word inciting, or triggering community discussion of issues that affect them into development frameworks. Um, our, our programs are around there, therefore around peace and governance. We've done civic education on the new constitution uh, with the support from uh, International Port Foundation Fellowship Program. Um, we have also been engaged in the past uh, post uh, election period uh, on monitoring of uh, peace, peace monitoring in Homa Bay and Migori counties. Um, and we are involved in training community leaders, on, particularly on, on leadership. Um, we have another good and important program in, for us, it's called Sports for Development. Um, actually, Creator, when we started Creata, it was through the ball. Uh, we just had an idea of engaging communities in beautiful programs, in things that can incite them to take actions into their own hands. And it was just through one ball that we went into the village of Rapogi in Uri District, Migori, then incited in, in, that incited many young people to, just because they wanted to, to kick the ball. Everybody wanted to kick a new ball. And that is how the discussion of regenerating communities came about. So um, we have been involved in sports for development. And uh, uh, as we engage with the sports activities, uh, we were selected by uh, through uh, KNVB that had supported uh, our coaches developing coaching skills to young people and uh, to participate in the football for water, sanitation, and hygiene. Uh, Kevin has talked a little bit uh, more about it. Uh, many people ask, how? In the beginning, we were asking, what do you do and why? But when we talk about football for water, hygiene and sanitation, many people, the next question is how? Uh, linking football and water hygiene and sanitation. And perhaps what I can say is um, football or other sports, football has the power to sustain a discussion and sustain an activity. It can sustain uh, an idea within the community. Because most of the time, like if you go for a training, you train people on behavior change. And then you let them go and do behavior change. Um, but what are those act actual activities that can say, sustain a practice or something that you have just done once? So we've discovered that football has that means to sustain a behavior or an activity that you've done one, once, do it every single day when you're doing football, then it becomes your culture. And that is the means through which we want to sustain 
awareness about hygiene in the community, about toilets, about uh, conservation of water and so forth. So currently we are doing this in, uh, in Migori County. Uh, hopefully we'll cover about 60 uh, schools in Migori and Nakuru counties. So we are doing this in partnership. I'm happy that one of the coordinating agency, uh, Orange Link, uh, they are all here, represented here, uh, because this is a, a program that brings in NGOs and, and, uh, and private public uh, uh, agencies to work together. So um, the other thing that also emerged is what we call Michezo na Elimu Savings Fund. Again, we use football to organize a community scholarship fund, a community-driven scholarship fund. And this was started by three women uh, through our program. When we organized uh, soccer teams, uh, football clubs of children in primary schools. And one of the issues that came up was, oh, can I have school fee for my kid? Uh, so, so, so three, what, the challenge, when this challenge came, we said, how can community have its own money to generate enough funds to take their kids to school? So that so many children, because we found many children just drop out of school after class eight because they can't transit to high school. Um, so we went into partnership with Safaricom uh, through M-Pesa facility, where we can now transfer, a, a parent who is selling vegetable can transfer like up to 10 or 50 shillings direct to bank account with all, you know, going digital, everything recorded straight away on the spot. So that it doesn't, money doesn't have to pass through many hands uh, uh, where it gets lost in the, in the middle. So that's how also we went into I, uh, the next level of collecting little that can support. Up to now, through this program, we are able to support uh, this year 10, 10, 10, 10 children in uh, high school and uh, two parents also getting uh, loans without interest. So what we do is invest this money and take it back to the parents in form of loans, uh, soft loans. Then we also have programs like volunteer. We mobilize volunteers from outside and within to help in uh, mitigating uh, either conflicts or, or uh, development activities. Um, I wanted to talk more about water, uh, football for wash, uh, football for water, hygiene, and sanitation. I've mentioned a few things. Uh, and particularly the use of ACVO uh, RSR. Um, I think for me, this is the best thing that have happened to my organization, because then I'm visible. And I always tell people, uh, if you are savvy with this, you can actually govern the country even from the, from the Hague, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, so I will show you, that is very possible. Last year I was challenging, look, hey, <laughs> this is timely, yeah? <laughs> um, I wanted to, uh, so we have mentioned we are, we are doing this in Migori and Nakuri counties, and it helps us really in monitoring, reporting, sharing with donors, and also the partners. Uh, I just want to show a link, uh, I think if I click like this, it should be able to come up. Um, yes, there is. Yes. So that is... Um, that is our, our web page in, uh, in the ACPO flow. So um, if you go on the left, on the right side, it will tell you the amount that's available for this program. It will tell you the activities that have been, uh, have been, uh, okay. I needed to improve that a bit. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, I, I wanted to go to the, these pages now. Um, uh, I think I need just to go into the, this one now, these activities. So there you will see the page, and you can also see the funding. You can see the activities that we have been able to, to do as we move on. Um, yeah, is, isn't that very beautiful? 
Uh, it just simply tells you that we are not reluctant. We are not just sitting down somewhere and giving some fake reports. You cannot fake this, isn't it? Yeah, because every day you put something with the names of people, actual things that are happening on the ground. And sometimes also video links that also having beneficiaries, also talking about their experience with something. Okay, so um, I think that one is opening some demonstration that we were able to do. Uh, uh, that was in Kitale, of how you can use a football drill to, to demonstrate um, wash. How, how can you use the excitement of football, the actual football playing, to demonstrate uh, how to wash your hands? And how can that become your culture, that every activity you do, even after listening to me here, you need to go and wash your hands. <laughs> <laughs> because then we prevent a lot of diseases. So, okay, so let's go back to the, to, to the, no, just go back to my presentation. Yeah, the minutes are running past. Uh, okay, the minutes are going past. So um, I just wanted to say the advantages of the, this, this tool. It's very easy to report. I tried even on top of a tree one day when the internet was very disturbing, disturbing downward. So uh, it was possible. So um, it's a very user friendly. You need to click just a few things and the thing will be up there. And it offers a very quick update. And you see, it can track your activity. And I experienced this when we have a, new, a newcomer in our organization and we told, write the report. So this guy, we just simply say, go to Agbo Flow, our uh, Agbo uh, RSR, and you can track the activities and develop the report. So that becomes very easy even for people who join you later to know everything that has happened in this, in this, in this, in this project. And then it shows the processes of how something came about very clearly. Accessibility to, uh, to uh, internet, particularly in the villages, that is a, a real challenge. Some most beneficiaries are computer illiterates. ADS is the ICK Development Services, which is the development arm of Anglican Church of Kenya, based in Nyanza region. We are participating in integrated uh, community development program. Uh, we implement programs uh, uh, facilitating access to better healthcare, uh, facilitating access to food security, and the community economic empowerment. There is one program that we are implementing that is supported by ICCO and Connect for Change uh, Alliance. Uh, this project is called uh, ICT for VCD, Integrating ICT for Value Chain Development. The aim of this program, program is to help farmers access information that can help them improve their farm productivity and also access the markets. What we did first when we started the project is to publish the project information on our Agvo page. So this is our ADS Agvo page. ADS Agvo. This during inception, we were to facilitate capacity building of 1,500 farmers uh, on use of ICT for marketing by 2013. And then the other uh, thing that we're to do is to facilitate the, the same farmers uh, to access timely, ac accurate market information. Around 300 farmers were being trained on use of various ICT solutions. In this project, we're working very closely with Kenya Agricultural Research Institution to develop content that are able to benefit farmers. When, when we're able to do that, we also posted an update whereby now passion food farmers were getting information using their mobile phones uh, to improve their passion food productivity and the quality of their crops. The other thing that we had to do is to, other than passing this information through mobile phones, was to develop them into small video, clinic, video clips and now conduct video clinics around the farm production areas whereby farmers could come and have very short uh, video clips depicting good agronomic practices. So we were able to do that as a project again. We had an update uh, on the Agvo RSR. On our continuous monitoring of uh, the project, we were able to see if 
farmers are really using this information? Are they really receiving the information? And are they really using this information for decision making in terms of improving their farm productivity, in terms of determining where they are selling their, their, market, their, their produce? So this is one of uh, a monitoring visit uh, to our farms. And uh, for, for example, this is a farmer who wants to know where they want to sell their, their sweet potatoes. Uh, part of our mandate as a project was to, to link them to a market information provider. In this case, we linked them to MFAM, who offers market uh, price information. Uh, so we are able to, to get farmers using this information. Uh, the other thing uh, during our monitoring visits, the other thing uh, during our monitoring visits, we are able to see the farms because part of our mandate was to see farmers in producing quality of their passion fruit. So when we visit farms, farmers who are receiving those information, you realize that uh, they are able to improve their productivity. Uh, the, we, we, we pass this information to farmers using their mobile phone. For example, for passion, passion fruit farmers, they normally have a spraying schedule. For example, this week they are supposed to spray these particular chemicals to their passion fruit farm. So all farmers who are doing passion fruit and are directly targeted by the project will get an update on their, on their mobile phone, reminding them that remember to spray this during this time, because if they don't spray that, then it, it's going to affect their, the quality of their produce. So we monitored those farmers who were able to get those information and the farmers who were not able to get it and realized that for those who are in the network or rather the database, reported improved quality of, of their fruit. So that was part of our mandate as a project. When we were able to do that, we posted an update on that. We went ahead and see now that they are able to sell uh, due to their linkage to the market, they are able to have quality produce as a result of... Uh, uh, getting information on their mobile phone. What are some of the, the impacts or effects of the project? Uh, this is a group of farmer also receiving information from their mobile phone. Uh, after the sale of their passion fruit, they were able to construct a latrine, a pit latrine and a bathroom. So when you look at our page, these are just some of the, the updates that we, that we make. Uh, how does this one also help those guys who are supporting us? ICCO is one of our partner in the project, uh, facilitating especially the funding part of the project. Uh, by viewing our ACVO page and seeing the updates that you are getting, they are able to track how the project is also delivering in, in terms of how, what they contracted us to do. As far, as far as I'm concerned, I don't have any challenges using um, the RSR. I only have maybe something that you guys can think about in future. Uh, right now we, 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 we take, we go do monetary visits and do updates. I'm think of, thinking of a situation in future whereby even the targeted beneficiary could also post, like, I am able to pay school fees. Uh, from the project and that one is also shared so it's, it's something that can be tracked even down to where we are targeting and where we have to change to see the real change thank you very much for your time from Kisumu Youth Football Association uh, until uh, two months ago I was the monitoring and evaluation officer but I'm currently the programs uh, manager uh, Kisumu Youth Football Association, uh, for the benefit of those who are interacting with this name for the first time, uh, basically seeks to improve lives of children and youth uh, using the platform provided uh, by football. Uh, we see Kaifa uh, to be providing structured football activities and engaging you know, in community development to improve lives of children and youth. And of course, we envision the organization being a leading sports for development organization in Africa. Sports for development simply meaning using sports as a platform to uh, deliver community uh, development objectives in the community. Uh, uh, again, for the benefit of those who are interacting with Kaifa for the first time, 
we had a pretty humble beginning, uh, basically uh, having a group of boys coming together uh, to play football. But the main objective of coming together was simply to uh, uh, basically distract them from everyday hardships you know, within the low-income areas. So uh, we've moved or we've grown from uh, basically uh, a program that distracts or offers distraction to children from their daily hardships to one that delivers uh, community development uh, uh, objectives. We have a sports program, uh, basically having organized competitions uh, with those particular numbers you're seeing there. So we're having over 3,000 children involved or engaged in our sports program. Uh, and uh, again, uh, those are just, again, a few, a few statistics uh, with regard to some of the achievements within uh, our sports program. The other program that we have, or the other set of, of projects that we have, have uh, we, we call them social development projects. And we have one we're calling Football and Beyond. And this basically uh, targets uh, girls uh, playing football. We uh, link them up with successful ladies in the community who act as mentors. And uh, they uh, undergo regular sessions of mentorship with the mentors. And hopefully, they get to open up. They get to share uh, some of the problems they face. And they also get to find solutions through the interaction with mentors. The other program, and sorry, I'm a little bit old school. It should be football for water, uh, but I'm still stuck with the, the traditional, the old name for this project, football for wash. So basically, uh, with a goal of reducing diseases and changing behavior on wash principles through football programs in selected primary schools. So this is a project that we are implementing uh, with, uh, I mean, together with a number of football partners and also a number of uh, WASH partners. Um, I just want to, again, get to the details of my presentation. Uh, Kaifa uh, had, again, a very humble interaction uh, with ACVO uh, during one of the meetings that uh, my former manager uh, had. And uh, ACVO provided or offered to do a film on Kaifa through Africa uh, Interactive News. The film was done basically featuring uh, the programs that we do. And the film ended up highlighting, of course, uh, the activities. That is a link uh, to, 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 to the film on YouTube. And we, or the film enabled us to raise some money, I think about 2,000 euros, you know, to run some of our activities. So that was our first interaction with ACFO. Now, getting to really simple reporting, again, I expect that, uh, I hope that my, my, my presentation is simple as, as it should be. <laughs> Why do we use really simple reporting as a platform uh, for telling our story at Kaifa? One is that we believe that uh, it is important to share that which we do, uh, share our activities with the outside world. We're not talking of the outside world in terms of donors, but we're also talking of the outside world in terms of beneficiaries. So uh, we're, not, we're going a notch higher than just posting pot photos and posting uh, updates, but we also post uh, linkages to uh, uh, some of this, I mean, to, to the ACVO site on our Facebook page and on our website, so that somebody who interacts with that link could also get to watch some of the, or to see some of the updates. Uh, we also, the other reason why we use uh, uh, RSR is because we'd want to uh, present actual situation uh, on the ground before, and then uh, we also uh, present the situation during implementation. So we do updates uh, uh, before, and we continue to do updates during the process of implementation. And I'm specifically referring to the Football for Water project that we're doing. Um, uh, we also believe that uh, uh, the platform uh, would offer as an ideal, ideal position or an ideal situation to demonstrate results, to demonstrate benefits of that which we're doing. Of course, because the data is there uh, on the page, uh, 
it also serves uh, the role of documentation. And as I had said, uh, we, of course, put linkages to uh, our ACVO page or our ACVO RSR page. Uh, and we hope that some of this, or rather when we're doing a proposal or something like that, we ensure that uh, these linkages are part of the proposal so that it basically demonstrates some of the things that we're doing. The other thing which I think is very important is we come from, we're doing sports, but we say that we're doing sports for development. Uh, it is very difficult to demonstrate, you know, to uh, a traditional donor that uh, organizing a football competition could basically make a child, you know, stop using drugs or work hard in school or something like that. But I think uh, having these updates, telling the story, sometimes ends up communicating or demonstrating the impact of that which we're doing. And uh, of course, the very last reason is that uh, we are having a very digital government, yeah? Yeah, so I think we also feel that we should take more leave from that. Now, uh, we have an account, of course, and uh, we do uh, updates after each and every activity that we do. Uh, we include uh, photos, and uh, basically all the updates that we do are very helpful to us when we're doing monitoring uh, of progress, because then if you have a picture uh, of pre-implementation, and then you have a picture uh, of implement, or a picture taken during implementation, that it basically uh, helps in demonstrating progress of that which you're doing. And as I had mentioned, uh, we also uh, put the links that we, uh, the, the links of our ACVO uh, RSR page on our Facebook and also on YouTube. So far, uh, we believe that uh, uh, because we're looking at the numbers of people uh, viewing some of our updates, so we, we believe that uh, we've had increased visibility as an organization. We also believe that uh, uh, because we have had those who ask us, you know, when we post link, we've had those who ask us about what we, about that which, the story that we had said, and in the process, uh, there is sharing of knowledge or gaining of new knowledge. Of course, it's very helpful in monitoring progress. And uh, we also, and, and it's something that I'm, as when I was doing my monitoring work, it's a critical reference point you know, when I want to just know what we did the last few days, then that, that's, that's a, a reference point that I go to. And again, a reputable site to refer potential, you know, donors or partners. Uh, of course, uh, there are challenges. And uh, we're talking about internet access. Uh, I'm not talking of internet. As, as, as project implementers, we could have internet, and we do have internet at our office. But of course, we're looking at the beneficiaries as also consumers of the information. And some of the in, in beneficiaries do not have access to the internet. So that is the reason why uh, we're trying to have the links on Facebook uh, for those who could have Facebook, so that then it's easy to just click and, and see. But, but still, bulk of our beneficiaries do not have access to the internet, so it means that they lose out on some of the, the information that we post up there. And of course, the culture of you know, uh, data collection and reporting through uh, paperwork is, is, is also a challenge that I could talk about. Um, that is, those are just a few, a few examples of uh, some of the updates that we, we do. If you look at the picture on the right side, uh, then what you see are a group of girls basically playing football, uh, but then the uniforms, they, are, they, they don't look very organized, but that is the situation. So this is a picture that we took about uh, a month ago. Uh, the situation is changing, has changed now because we've brought in some inputs, and we believe after a period of time the situation is going to change. So that, of course, is a demonstration of uh, basically how a uh, platform of this nature you know, once we do another, I mean, updates, continuous updates, after one year, then it's not going to be this, this, this picture. It's going to be a very, very different picture. 
Yeah, so I want to stop there. I believe I've not. Just our time, perfect. No okay, problem. thank you very much. <laughs>